When it comes to planning for the future and planning for retirement and money in general, we often use rules of thumb and different shortcuts that kind of get us to where we want to go when it comes to knowing if someone is on track, right? But some of these rules of thumb are better than others and some are just trash, <laughs> okay? Um, and today we're gonna talk about one that is somewhere in the middle where sometimes it could be extremely misleading on what it actually means for you. And we're gonna be talking about one by Fidelity. Now Fidelity has a very famous article and study about how much money you should have saved compared to your salary at different ages. Now, on the YouTube channel, I'm gonna stick up a, a graphic of a, a picture of what they say, but long story short, by the time you're 30, they say, hey, you gotta have one times your salary saved for retirement. So if you make 100 grand, then you gotta have 100 grand saved. Now, come 67, which they assumed in this article where when a lot of people retire, take Social Security, that sort of thing, you have to have 10 times your salary to be able to retire comfortable, right? That is the thesis of the article. Now there's lots of other de details and nuances, but that is the core of it. And of course, in between age 30 and 67, there's different multiples along the way to see if you are on track. But I guess the question for today is, okay, is that relevant at all for you guys as federal employees? Because as you know, as you read articles online, where they're often not talking specifically to federal employees. And do you have different needs, different situations than the average American, right? So let's dive right into that. So the first thing, an obvious thing that pops out of me right away is, well, the average American does not have a pension from their job. The average American does have social security, but the average American does not have a pension as well, which of course is you as federal employees, you will have a pension. Now, again, the reason why rules of thumb are not always the best thing is because every situation is different. And your situation, even to your coworkers, even someone exactly the same age as you doing the exact same thing, I guarantee it's gonna be different. I guarantee that you've been working for the government maybe a little longer, a little shorter, you've saved more, you've saved less, you're investing differently, you have different family needs. Every situation and retirement, I've, I've looked at so many retirement plans and, and people's plans for retirement when it comes to um, their federal retirement. So many, so, so, so many. And I've never seen one that was identical. Never, right? There are all these nuances everywhere. So what does that mean for you? Okay, so the short answer is, maybe you do need 10 times your salary at age 67 to retire, but maybe you need a lot less than that, or somewhere in between, right? So the first thing is, now there's really three things when it comes to, when you see this chart that I was just talking about by Fidel, if you go to the article, if you Google it, or if you see it on the YouTube channel, if you say, wow, I am so behind, or maybe you say, hey, I'm doing pretty good, regardless of what your reaction is, do these three things for me, okay? Number one. Don't freak out and don't celebrate quite yet, okay? Don't do that because again, rules of thumb, not so helpful all the time. That's number one, don't freak out, don't, don't uh, celebrate quite yet, that's one. Number two, d dive into your situation, okay? You have to start thinking like, okay, how do I compare to the average American? You do have a pension, which is nice, so maybe you don't need you know 10 times your salary at 67 on average, but how long have you been with the government? What is your pension gonna provide for you in retirement? What's your plans with Social Security? What is your spouse's financial situation? Do they have savings? Do they have a pension? What about their Social Security? What's their plan? Um, if something happens to you, are they taken care of? You have to start thinking through all these little details, like, okay, how much do I have in my TSP? How much can that provide for me? Now, I have a video about that, about the 4% rule, how you could get a ballpark for what your TSP can provide. I will link that below so you could check that out as well. But these are the questions you have to answer to know for you how many multiples of your salary you need to retire comfortable. Now, another huge, huge element here is where are you gonna retire? I know feds that literally leave the country, right? They go down to South America, they go to, over to Europe, they go to Florida, they go to wherever. And is it cheaper to live there? Is housing cheaper? What changes are there? Is your mortgage gonna be paid off in retirement? What about any debts? What about all these things? There's so many nuances that are packed into every person's situation that just saying, hey, you need 10 times your salary 
just doesn't even get close. It doesn't even get even close. So that is the action number two is you have got to dive into your situation. And I know, I know that everyone is not a numbers person. I get it. I, I, I'm a numbers person. I love the numbers. I help feds run the numbers and figure it out for them all the time, all the time. I love it. But I understand not everyone's there. Do your best. Start simple. Get an estimate from your HR on your pension. Like, okay, what's that? Get a social security statement. Get, go to ssa.gov, pull a statement to kind of ballpark, hey, what can I get at different ages? That's a great place to start. Now, do the 4% rule. And again, check out my other video on that for your TSP to estimate how much income that could provide. And, it, and if you're getting close to retirement, the more solid these numbers are gonna be. If you're 20 years out from retirement, well, I, a lot of things are gonna change. Well, you always wanna start preparing now and saving as much as you can and, and educating yourself, but I guarantee you the rules and things are gonna change between now and 20 years from now. So do the best you can. But the closer you get to retirement, it becomes crunch time where you've gotta know your numbers and know how close you are so that you can adjust your expectations. Because there's nothing worse then thinking you can retire tomorrow, then actually running the numbers and saying, oh, actually I gotta retire, you know, work another five years. Nothing worse. But there's nothing better than playing, like, I probably should work another five years. Then you run the numbers and you find, oh wow, I could actually retire today and I'll be fine. And I've seen both situations many times. I've worked with people where I, I help them, I start digging into stuff and like, oh man, there's some things we really got to get, to get taken care of. You just aren't ready to retire yet. But I talked to other people where they underestimate their ability, their finances to be able to retire and live the life that they want without any issues. So where are you at? Start running these numbers, figuring where you're at. Now, action number three is once you have this information for you, then you have to take action. And for some of you, this is going to be a kick in the pants saying, hey, I am way behind. I need to get it into gear, whether it's paying off debt, whether it's putting more in the TSP, whatever it is, obviously be reasonable. Don't, don't just live off ramen for the next 10 years before retire, whatever it is, be reasonable. But take responsibility for your retirement. If you're not where you wanna be, how can you get there? You gotta start taking action, do something today about it, right? And if you're on a great track, if you're doing great, hey, keep that up. That's number three, so take action, come up with a plan, and get to where you want to go. Throw out all these rules of thumb that aren't tailored to you. Look at your your personal situation and then take actions that are tailored for you, for you personally so that you can take responsibility for your retirement. And when you do that, the world will open up. You're like, wow, I understand my money. I need to understand how my retirement's gonna work. And you will have control over how things work. Now, Obviously, there's lots of rules and things we can't control. We can't control the market. We can't control what the government does. We can't control taxes, but we can control what we do. And there's a ton in our control, and that is what we have to focus on. When it comes to your TSP, let me give one small, small little pep talk about it. Your TSP is so powerful. That is often one of the most powerful pieces of your retirement because it is in your control. In your control but your TSP has flexibility where it's not fixed, where if you need a little extra today, hey, you could take it out, but take less out later. There's so much flexibility that comes with actually having money. And then if you want to give to charity, if you want to give to your kids, well, you've got real money there that you can do it with, right? When it comes to pension and social security, often when you pass away and maybe your spouse passed away, that's gone, it's gone forever and there's no legacy there, right? So your TSP is extremely crucial. Now, it doesn't mean if you don't have 10 times your salary, you can't retire, you can't be comfortable. I've seen people retire with just a couple multiples of their salary and they're fine, right? You just gotta figure out again what makes sense for you and then go from there. So I hope this was educational but also somewhat of a pep talk to hey, figure out what is up for you and then go from there. So have an incredible rest of your day and I'll see you next time.